is Alex Goncharenko. He is a member of the Ukrainian parliament. Uh, Alex, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, let me get uh, your response to President Biden's speech uh, in that last hour. Uh, do you think he went far enough in reassuring the Ukrainian people? And, and what did you make of his uh, warnings to, to Vladimir Putin? Uh, the speech was uh, strong, passionate. Uh, so uh, I, I, I like the speech, but uh, what I, I think uh, should be more in speech, uh, some uh, precise details of uh, what will be done uh, in support of Ukraine. I mean, I would be happy to hear about air defense systems or finally the decision about aircraft, Polish aircraft, because it's Poland. These old Soviet MiG-29, which Ukraine is so desperately waiting for, uh, that would be, for me, a very strong signal, unfortunately. I haven't heard this, and this is important because for Ukraine now, we want more details, we want some concrete things. Uh, we know that we are fighting for freedom and for the good, to, uh, and, and for the good of the whole world against evil, yes, but we want to know that we will be weaponed because now some of our people are coming against tanks with Molotov cocktails and Russians are using skies to attack us with missiles like in Lviv, like you showed it just now. All maternity houses or hospitals or schools in our uh, country are attacked from the sky. So we desperately need air defense and aircraft. Um, and, and Alex, you toured the city of Cherniv, um, a city whose population is less than half of what it was before Russia invaded. Um, the mayor says the city is surrounded and that there have been uh, direct hits on hospitals. Um, tell us uh, what you're seeing there and what you have seen there. Yeah, um, you heard about Mariupol today. President Biden mentioned this city, uh, and it's awful what's happening there. It's almost destroyed, devastation. But Chernihiv is another example of these Putin's tactics of terror against people. The city is uh, almost blocked. Uh, the last bridge which connected Chernihiv to the other Ukraine was bombed just days ago, and the only pedestrian bridge from the city is bombed every day by Russian mortars, where, and this is the corridor for people to leave. So it's a humanitarian corridor, but nevertheless, Russians are attacking it with mortars. People for 10 days already are without electricity, without centralized water, without heating, almost without gas, uh, and certainly the supplies are also uh, short. So that is the awful situation for more than 100,000 people who left there. And Putin is just trying to take these people, the population of Chernihiv, in hostages. And Alex, I have to ask you, I mean, we were just showing some video of you. I believe we're showing it right now, some of the video that you uh, were capturing there in Chernihiv. Um, tell the American people, if you can, what is it that the Ukrainian people need most of all at this point? You just heard from President Biden uh, a short while ago. Um, if you could communicate directly with the White House, uh, what would you say to the American government in terms of what your country needs right now and what uh, areas like Cherniv need uh, right now? Uh, we need air defense, including Patriots. Not a hand air defense, but a really serious air defense systems. And uh, the United States and its allies uh, have these uh, systems. We need aircrafts. Even these old Soviet Polish uh, aircrafts, but also we need them. Uh, we need trucks as uh, more, as much as possible because uh, a lot of cars and trucks in the country are destroyed, especially in army, and we need them desperately. And also we need more sanctions against Russian Federation. Uh, for example, uh, embargo for Russian uh, ships to come to American ports. Oh, SWIFT. Uh, it was said that Russia is cut off from SWIFT. But in reality, it is not, because only seven Russian banks, which makes 15 percent of Russian financial system, is cut off. But everything else is operational. And that means that Russia is inside international financial system. That should be stopped immediately, because what we need to do, just not to give Putin an opportunity to afford this war, because in other case, we will have the third world war. And CNN spoke to a family who fled Cherniv, um, and here's how they described uh, their escape there. I woke up in road, 
I see the broken car and I see like my mother going in fire uh, my mother was ще була жива тоді коли горіла my mother was still alive when well she was on fire загинула вона на місці загинула вона згоріла ще вона she died uh, she died at that location and she was still alive when she got the fire when my clothes uh, caught the fire and she just burned Alex, it, it's so awful to hear these stories. Uh, that, that, that young man Absolutely. was just talking about his mother who was burned alive. Um, uh, how, his how eyes. Do, uh, what, what, what is your response to, um, to Vladimir Putin and, and the Russians who continue to carry out these kinds of war crimes? It's just, it's despicable, it's disgraceful. Absolutely. Uh, President Biden told today that Putin is a butcher and he is a war crime. That absolutely for sure. But I want to tell you that not only Putin is butcher and war crime. Russian soldiers and officers who are doing things like this, who are raping our women, who are bombing our hospitals, they know what they are doing. Exactly like in Mariupol, in this dramatic theater where people had a shelter, there was a great letters, uh, children written in Russian. And it was seen from satellite, even. So Russian pilot who was bombing it, he knew definitely what he was doing. So Russians are responsible for what Putin is doing now. Russian society is responsible for this dictator. It should be absolutely clear. And uh, if they have a dignity inside them, if they have any humanity inside them, they need to stop it now. And the White House is saying that when President Biden was saying earlier that Putin... Uh, cannot remain in power. The White House quickly clarified and said, uh, we're not talking about regime change. Would you like to see the American government officially call for regime change in Russia? Absolutely. If we are saying that he is a war crime, how it could be a regime headed by war crime? I just can tell you that I want not only to see regime changed, I want to see Putin dead. And I hope there will be coup d'etat in Russia because for the Russian society is so speechless and is so sorry, but it's so slavery that uh, I, I believe that only coup d'etat of some uh, people who are around Putin can change the situation so they can kill him like one of three Russian emperors in history were killed. And uh, I think that's something which should happen with Putin to stop this awful situation. And also I want to remind you that Putin started to threaten the world with a nuclear weapon nuclear weapon. So it's the danger for any person, a living uh, human being on this planet. All right, Alex uh, Goncharenko, thank you very much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. And still to come, President Biden says uh, Vladimir Putin cannot remain in power. The White House clarifying those remarks. Uh, Senator Bob Casey, who sits on the intelligence